A question which I've been asked a few times is where do I buy my materials from and what materials and alloys do I buy? I think of all the things when I was starting out, actually finding a place that would sell me small amounts of material was one of the hardest things. I always prefer to buy my materials and tools from the local hardware store since it's only a 5 minute drive from the workshop and unsurprisingly they don't exactly sell large pieces of metal. What they sell is mostly extruded aluminium and box section steel. And I'm sure every hobbyist can relate to this in some way. I'll timestamp later in the video for when I actually talk about where I get my material since that's aimed towards Australians, but what I want to do first is go through the materials that I've used, what they're like to machine, and what grades that I use. And I should note, Quinn at Blondie Hacks did a very similar video aimed towards North American viewers, and it's definitely worth checking out. I'll start off with the material that I've used the most throughout the years, and that's aluminium. It's relatively inexpensive, and I'm able to pick it up pretty easily in pretty much any shape and size. And of course, it's light and very easy to work with. As a general rule of thumb, if I can get away with making something from aluminium, I'll always make it from aluminium, rather than spending the extra time machining steel, or the extra cost making it from brass. I like aluminium because it machines pretty nicely, and most of my tools last a very long time when I machine it. And seeing as end mills are a lot harder to resharpen than lathe tools, it's always something good to keep in mind. And a good splash of WD-40 or kerosene acts as a really good cutting fluid which helps machine it and extend the tooling life. Now I think a lot of people tend to overlook aluminium because it actually has pretty decent mechanical properties. Obviously it's not steel, but it has a pretty decent tensile strength and can be pretty adequate for a lot of applications. Of course it does dent pretty easily, and it's not very wear resistant, so you obviously want to avoid applications where there's a lot of sliding contact, but for a lot of tools, it gets the job done. In terms of alloys, there's quite a lot to choose from, but the most common one that I've come across is 6061. It's a good all-round aluminium, and I've used it for years. However, it can be pretty tricky to machine, especially on a lathe, Unless you really nail the feeds and speeds and have a good chip breaker, it has a tendency to produce long bird nests, rather than small chips. It's for that reason that I've switched over almost exclusively to using 2011 aluminium, which is also known as free machining aluminium. It's a little bit more expensive, but the difference in machining is well worth the added cost. Even without a chip breaker, it will form small little chips, as a result, I can machine this a lot faster than I can machine 6061. The only real downside for aluminium for me is I don't have a welder that's capable of welding it. You can use special brazing rods, which I have done in the past, and you can get some good results from it, but I've always found these brazing rods to be pretty inconsistent, and I've found some brands need excessive heat to work, although the bond that I get is usually pretty strong. Another material that I've machined extensively in the past is brass. It's easily my favourite material to machine with because it's very forgiving, it breaks a really nice chip and it gives a very good finish. I've seen people who don't have much experience with lathes get really good looking parts from brass. And it polishes up to have a really nice looking finish. It is more expensive than aluminium. This half inch by two foot long cutoff of brass cost me about $15, so it's not cheap, but it's not super expensive either. In terms of strength, it's about 25-30% to stronger than aluminium, depending on what alloy you're talking about. When machining it, you want to use a zero side rate tool and no cutting fluid. The only time that I ever use any cutting fluid with brass is when I'm cutting threads. And one thing that I really like about brass is that it's very easy to solder two parts together using lead or silver solder. Now the most common alloy that you'll find is C360, which is also known as free machining brass, and that's the brighter stuff that I have. The darker one on the left is C385, and that's very similar. If you're just getting started in the hobby, it's a great idea to get a good amount of brass because it's very easy to learn with and just very forgiving to machine. The only downside to brass, apart from the cost, is it can easily work harden and crack, and it's not immune to corrosion. A very similar metal to brass is bronze. Whereas brass is a mix of copper and zinc, bronze is a mix of mostly copper 
a bit of tin, and sometimes with zinc added. Generally speaking, I don't have too much experience with bronze because I try to avoid it as much as possible, and that's because it's a very expensive material. This small 25 by 50 round piece of bronze is almost the same price as that rod of brass that I showed earlier. I only use it when I have to, and it's mostly used for applications that experience a lot of wear. Now the alloy that I have here is LG2 leaded bronze, which is the nicest one that I've machined, though the most popular is phosphor bronze, and I believe the phosphor increases the wear resistance, although I don't have very much experience machining that. Finally, let's talk about steel, and there is a lot to talk about. There are many ways of classifying different types of steels. For example, here are two different types of the same mild steel. Mild being that it has a carbon content less than 0.3%. The dark piece has been hot rolled or hot formed. When they were shaping it, it was hot, and that leaves a crusty mill scale or a black finish. The overall shape also tends to be pretty poor on a hot rolled part. You can see that due to the forming process, the edges are actually bowed out, and that's something that I'll have to machine down and mill flat. Hot rolled steel is a fair amount cheaper than cold rolled, and it's a lot easier for me to get, but I'm not a huge fan of using it. It's very gummy to machine, and it doesn't leave a nice surface finish. I tend to have to use a lot of cutting fluid to get a half decent finish. On the other end of the spectrum, we have cold rolled. This is a bar of the same mild steel, 1020 grade, but it's been cold formed. I believe this one specifically has been cold drawn, and because of the forming process, the surface is a lot more cleaner and it's a lot more truer to shape than the hot rolled. The biggest advantage of cold formed steel is that the internal structure of the steel has been worked, and that results in the steel being a lot harder and stronger. And it's a lot nicer to machine than cold rolled steel. The chip breaks a lot easier, it's not as gummy to work, and it gives a much nicer surface finish. However, it does take a fair amount longer to machine. Steel can also be classified depending on the carbon content. Mild steel has a carbon content below 0.3%, whilst medium to high carbon steels range from about 0.3 to 2% carbon. And the biggest difference between a carbon steel and a mild steel is that you can heat treat carbon steel whilst mild steel cannot. Now getting into the grades that I've used, 1018 and 1020 are the mild steel alloys that I've used the most and I probably still use them the most. They're the easiest to come by and they are pretty easy to work with. However, I've really moved over to liking 12L14 and I use 12L14 when I can use it. 12L14 is also known as free machining steel, and like the name implies, this grade is made to be machined on a lathe or a mill. And even on my small lathe, I've been able to take 1mm depth of cuts and get really good surface finishes. It's also cold drawn, so it has a pretty decent tensile strength, so I've used it for tool holders and that was certainly strong enough. My understanding is for the good machinability, they've added a small amount of lead, about 0.1%, but it seems to make the difference. The only big downside to 12L14 is you can't weld it. I've tried and the bead just doesn't stick. I've also found out that it's a lot more prone to corrosion than other alloys. Overall, this is my favourite alloy of steel to work with, though it's not available in every shape and size, and it is a little bit more expensive than mild steel. The other type of steel that I've worked with is 316 stainless, and as the name implies, it's pretty resistant to corrosion. This one here is also cold drawn, so it's quite strong. I've never had too much issue machining it, you just have to watch out because it can work harden on you if you let things rub too much. Personally, I prefer to use carbide tools on 316 steel because I've burnt through quite a few high speed steel tools before trying to break through the work hardening. If you can find it though, 303 stainless is a lot nicer to machine than 316 or 304. The final type of steel that I've used a decent amount is cast iron, and cast iron is a very nice material to machine on the mill, although I've never had too much success with it on the lathe. The high carbon content acts as a lubricant, and cutting and drilling it is really nice to do. 
The only real downside is, it does create a lot of dust, and that dust tends to go everywhere and cover everything, plus it'll stain your hands black. And as much as I like to machine it, I really use it for this reason. It's a shame though, because it's a good material for tools and dyes, plus the carbon content gives it a good amount of lubricity and wear resistance. It's also really good at absorbing vibrations, hence why it's used as the castings for lathes and mills. In the past, I've also cut down dumbbells because some of them are made from cast iron. However, I've always found those castings to be of very poor quality and porous. And that's a basic overview of the materials that I commonly use in the workshop. Now the big question is, where do I buy them? Well, I used to buy a majority of my material off eBay. There's quite a lot of eBay stores that will sell stock, and you can pick it up locally or get it shipped. However, of course, shipping is expensive. That $15 or so on top of the material can really add up when you factor in the cost of material. I have bought some offcuts from a friend's fabrication shop, but the majority of the time, I'll buy my material from a company called Edcon Steel. I like Edcon because you can order small amounts of material. I think the minimum cut length is about 15 or so millimeters, which really suits me. There is a cut charge associated with it, but it's not that much. And this really suits me. I don't have that much room in the workshop, so I only order what I need. Plus, I can get it shipped to my workshop, or I can pick it up. Now, I'm sure there are other companies like this out there, but I've used Edcon for the past half year or so, and I've been pretty happy with them. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new. And with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.